Uh, hi everyone, welcome back to another little painting demo. Um, this painting today is a response to my last video, uh, which was my first ever serious painting, which was this one. Um, I think you'll remember the video. If you haven't seen that video, it might be worth watching before you watch this one. Um, there's a link to it below the video in the description there. You can find uh, the link for uh, this video there. Um, what I've done is I, I've taken the video, things have changed though a little bit over the last 30 years, so I've kind of like found a picture on the internet just to update it a bit. I, I haven't videoed the drawing because it just takes too long, uh, and then all the painting process as well. But the general consensus for, from everybody was that I should paint the picture again. And um, let's just zoom in a bit and see how it goes and see the difference between the two. Well, all of a sudden, already I can see a kind of a difference there. Um, you know, there's, there's an awful lot more detail in the picture, um, which I chose to leave out on this one. And that was probably because I was too scared. Well, I didn't understand how to put it in, how to suggest it properly. Um, now, whether, you know, whether it would be better to leave out, I don't know. Ultimately, we'll see in the end. Uh, but what I'll be concentrating on this painting is is the values. Uh, I, w I want to create much better values because this side of the cottage, I didn't put it in shade, but it's a sunny day and it should have been a shadow that side of the... Um, the, the shadows are a bit confused. I've got a shadow with a lamppost but, and a shadow with a phone box, but I haven't got shadows anywhere else, uh, which is all a bit confused really. But that's okay because it was a learning process and the previous video just, um, sort of talks about that. So anyway, I've drawn it out, and what I'm gonna do now is have a go at painting it. Um, I'll be talking a little bit through some of it, and um, not through other bits, so I don't wanna get sick and tired of my voice. Um, and that's about it, really. We'll just see how, how the process goes, and we'll see what it looks like in the end. A um, few couple of little things here I'm not happy with. Um, I've got better perspective on these. If you think just little things like if you look at the perspective on those those windows, I didn't have the the perspective right on them. They should have been going up more and to give that illusion of being up on a hill. And now I've in this drawing, I feel like I'm up on a hill. I almost feel like in this drawing, in this painting, that the cottage is is on the same level with me. Well, it's not. Um, but I feel like, you know, maybe I've gone actually a little bit high up here, I don't know, but I've worked with, with the resources I've got here to recreate this painting, so um, we'll just paint it, but I want it to have a lovely sunny feel, because the Elves of Silly is a beautiful place where it's, always, well, it's not always sunny, but that's why people like to go there, because it just looks fabulous when it's sunny. So I'm going to paint it a nice blue sky, nice nice bright colours and see what we end up with. I'm not using hot press paper today in case anybody's wondering, I'm using Arsh 140 pound, um, not surface paper. So let's get stuck in and paint. Okay then, I'm just starting off with the, uh, the sky and for that I'm just using some, uh, some cobalt blue and a little touch of cerulean blue and I just want to keep the sky really simple because because there's quite a lot going on actually in the painting itself. So keeping the sky simple um, isn't going to just make it too overly busy. Um, and I'm just putting a few darker strokes of colour into the sky while it's still wet, just to give it a bit of variation in uh, value. Now the distant headland, the distant trees and uh, you can see on the horizon, they're just painted with a various mix of uh, lemon yellow and cobalt blue uh, with a touch of red um, in places just to, to grey out, to make it slightly more neutral, to lose the greenness essentially. Um, but so again you can see the way I'm just varying that and I don't mind the sky slightly wet because what that what's that what that's achieving is it's slightly softening the horizon line so I don't get that sort of hard cut out look I get a much softer horizon then I'm just using a little bit of Naples yellow here to paint the beach now don't forget you can you know you can slow the video down at any point and watch it yourself in a much slower slower time if you choose to but for the month for my uh, point of editing and everything it's just easier if I do it in a faster time 
Um, so just a Naples yellow with a touch of cadmium red, just to sort of make it slightly pinkier, redder. Um, and then that is some cerulean blue with a little bit of lemon yellow. And I think it might be a little bit of red and green in there as well, because it looks quite zesty. I think it was, I, it was a bit, so I added a little bit of cobalt blue, blue afterwards, and that darkened it down slightly. I wasn't quite happy with the colour it was that. I wanted it slightly darker because you only see a very little glimpse of water there um, through the tops of the houses. So I just wanted to get this background area done because it was part of the painting that was really bothering me, actually. Because um, it's, it's quite a fiddly area to paint and I didn't want to get caught up in trying to paint every house and everything. I just wanted to do a suggestion of buildings to just show those buildings that are there. Um, so again, for that, I'm just using various mixes of cobalt blue with some uh, cadmium red in it, a little bit of um, raw sienna, um, and a little bit more red, you know, just to make it, you know, the, the change the colours of the building slightly. So I'm basically intermixing warm and cool colours uh, to try and build up a bit of light and dark and uh, all that sort of stuff. So it's just suggesting the buildings. Uh, nothing more, just a suggestion. You know, nobody's going to actually recognise their house there or anything. Well, they might do just about, but it is just a suggestion if you've been there before. But um, I, I recommend the Isles of Scilly. It's a fabulous place to go if you're in the UK and you want to go to... It's a very over... You know, lots of people don't even know about it or know where it is. Um, I lived there for 19 years and it is a beautiful place to visit. Um, God, it's like going back in time. It's like, especially I lived on one of the off islands called Saint Martin's, and on that island there was only eighty, eighty six. I think when I was there, eighty six full time residents, and it was such a peaceful place to live. It was a bit too insular for my liking. After a while, it became a little bit too claustrophobic, and I, I kind of lived there for gosh, I mean, fourteen odd years, fifteen years, I think it was. Uh, but both my sons grew up there and had a fabulous childhood playing and doing all things kids should be doing, really. So they had a fantastic time. Anyway, back to the painting. So now I'm painting the roof of the house, and for that I'm just using a little bit of Naples yellow, cobalt blue, and a touch of cadmium red. And for that I can get a nice range of greys, warmish greys, uh, which I wanted for the roof. Now, as, I, as this progresses, I had a little bit of, I had a few problems with this house. I, I couldn't make my mind up how to deal with it. I, I started to be a bit more, becoming a little bit more confident with my brushwork as I moved through the painting. But I wanted to really keep the colours varied. I didn't want to get into laying down big flat blocks of the same colour. And that's something for you, but for beginners, I can't sort of stress enough is try and keep your washes varied like that and try and get the values right, try and get the light and dark of the colour right uh, because that will give your painting a lot more impact. So again, there we go, just more of the same sort of colours, just uh, Naples yellow, cobalt blue and a touch of cadmium red. Great, three great colours that you can play around with and, and do a lot awful lot of things with. So I'm just painting over the windows here now. Because uh, I wanted them to be kind of blue. Um, I didn't want to put too much brown. Even though the brown will kind of run into it slightly and make it a bit greyer. Overall, Scott, sorry about my head keep popping in the way. It's because I couldn't see what I was doing. Oh, dear. Um, so, yeah, so I, I painted over the windows blue. I went a little bit dark over the windows. I could have gone a little bit lighter. It wouldn't have hurt. I lifted, what I did do, I, I lifted a bit of colour out afterwards just to um, make them slightly lighter. But it didn't really lift out. The, the colour had soaked into the paper and it was a job to get it out. So that now I just sort of, as I was working down the building, thought, well, I might as well put the plants in because that will so I'll get a nice soft edge of the plants as it sort of uh, bleeds into the colour of the house. And again for that, I'm going back just back to lemon yellow and... Um, some cobalt blue and when it goes sort of that darker colour it's just a touch of red in there so more blue and a touch of red and you get a nice variation of greens so because the light was sort of coming in and out of play on this stretch I had to kind of bear in mind that I had to keep changing from warm to cool all the time and you'll see that in a minute as we work down the page um, little little shafts of light were just creeping over the top of the building 
and uh, I wanted to make sure I got that because that is what the painting is all about really I think in many ways and anybody that's been to the Silly Isles will really recognise it for the because uh, they get such a mild climate there for the UK very rarely do they get frosts uh, they can grow all these sort of subtropical plants and everything um, and they grow like weeds there, things that we'd love to be able to grow, they just grow like weeds there. So yeah, so there we go, where the light was coming through there, I wanted to make sure I got my my brighter greens in. And I use, uh, uh, I can never pronounce this word, aerolin, aerolin, aerolin. Hmm. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, it's a very sort of warm yellow, a very bright warm yellow. And it's, uh, I'll put a title over it in a minute uh, when I get, when I finish in the voice. And I'll leave the name for you to see. Um, so that's the pathway. I wanted some warm greys there. So I just used the same greys as I was using for the house, which is, again is the Naples yellow. Cobalt blue and a touch of red. And I just mixed various washes of that. Start to look a bit messy at this point. You probably think to yourself, what's he doing? It's going to be a disaster. This is why you must always persevere because you can often look at a painting and think, oh my God, it's not coming together. Well, it isn't. Until you start putting the shadows in, the paintings don't. And that's typical of my first painting. I didn't put the shadows in and the painting looked very flat. And that's how what I see in people's work all the time. People send me paintings to have a look at and whatnot. And I often see, you know, just the one thing they need to do is put the shadows in uh, to build up those darks. And that really is, you know, a central part of watercolour painting, having the uh, courage, I suppose, wrong word. Here we go, I'm trying to lift a little bit of colour out, but it, it was a bit stubborn, it didn't want to come up. Lifts a little bit. I think it helped a little bit. Um, but I, what I do eventually, I put another wash over that building, and but don't paint over the windows, obviously. And that, well, there we go, I've done it. And it's, it probably looks too dark there, but that's because the rest of the painting is not done yet. When, the, when I actually finish doing the rest of the painting, that sits back quite well and you'll see what I mean. So it's worth persevering to the end and seeing the whole because it all comes together at the end. Yeah, if you like that style of painting, it's not for everybody, I agree. But uh, so a nice green door there, which I wanted it really loosely made. A, and the windows, um, a few people ask me how to paint windows. I will do uh, another video very short, shortly on painting windows in more detail so you can see how to paint them and how to get that feeling of glass. But I, all I did with that was just dab colouring. I didn't try and paint every pane of cut glass. I literally just suggested a few of them. Um, now as we start getting the shadows in, things start to come together a little bit more. Uh, because you start creating that depth. It still looks obviously very heavy that side because there's nothing going on on the left side. But um, as soon as we start uh, getting the shadows in, things start happening a little bit. We can see the painting come together. But what I was really excited about painting was the left side because I knew when I started getting in the colours there, the lovely warm sunny colours, it was going to make it was going to make the painting work more. So I had to be patient because I wasn't overly happy with it when I looked at it at that stage because it just didn't look right, obviously. I needed the colours behind there to make that part of the painting work. Um, if you're worrying, I haven't forgotten the roof and the shadows on the roof. I will be coming back to those in a minute. And that kind of pulls it all together a bit more when I complete that. So now we're starting on the left-hand side. Now this, 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 this part of the painting is mostly in full sun. So it was quite, so I'm just kind of using a sort of high key colours, no sort of mixes with blues or anything. I'm really using some pure colour here um, to, to keep nice and fresh and nice and warm, basically. Keep the colours nice and warm. And as you can see, I'm using that Chinese brush again. Um, it's one I use all the time. I love it. It's so versatile. I think I've probably used it, apart from the sky, I've used it everywhere on this painting. I th I almost used it for the whole painting. I'm just the one brush. People keep saying to me, oh, can you suggest what sort of brushes I use? You know, oh, well, I can give you a list of lots of different brushes, but if you can get one favourite, you could do an awful lot with one brush. You don't need um, 10 or 20 brushes, really, to complete one painting. 
Um, this brush, it's got, an, it's got a big enough area to hold a lot of paints, but also it's got a very good point on it, so you can really get in there and paint the details. Now I'm just kind of painting in around the flowers uh, to suggest the roofs of the houses in the distance. And I feel the painting starts coming together at this stage a bit more. But I didn't want to go too heavy with these roofs. I was mindful not to make them too dark because it's too easy. Like I say, you can always add more, but you can't really very easily take it away. So, and again, I wanted to delete, make it really loose so it looked really lots of light and it was shimmery and, uh, you know, lots of nice things happening. So in that roof there, I just added a little bit of cobalt blue with a little bit of uh, cadmium red. Uh, various mixes of that. Um, the roof on the other side had some sort of algae growing on it, so I just added a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow and cadmium red together and then put some blue into that. To suggest the the different you know the mosses on the roof. So this looks again you know not not much look like it looks like it's happening there because I haven't yet started to put the shadows in. There we go. Now we're going to start putting the shadows in a bit, and with a bit of luck it should start all coming together. So this is just really dark mixes of cobalt blue. Um, uh, permanent rose, um, touch of uh, raw sienna, colours like that to make grey out slightly. You know, just practice mixing these sort of nice rich uh, shadow colours, just practice them uh, on a piece of paper and uh, you'll soon get the hang of it. And then you can, by do if you just do it on a piece of paper, you can sort of do comparisons to see how 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 light they dry afterwards. So you can kind of judge the balance, uh, how how dark you need to go. So if you enjoy this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It all helps the channel if you can do that. Um, give it a thumbs up, and if you really hate it, give it a thumbs down. It's up to you. Um, yeah, and don't forget to come along to my website, Pure Watercolour. And a lot of my paintings I do on YouTube can be bought on eBay. I put a lot of them. I'm not sure whether I'll put this one on eBay. I don't know yet. I might do. Uh, but a lot of paintings can be uh, of mine can be actually found. There's a link. There's a link to them underneath the video. You can click on it, and it'll take you to my eBay page. Get yourself a bargain. Ridiculously cheap paintings. So just add a little bit of texture to the roof there. And things now are just starting to sort of, uh, you know, come together nicely really, I think. Still got the shadows to go on some of the buildings down the bottom. I love putting this shadow in. I really enjoyed that. It's a really deep shadow where the eave of that building must be overhanging quite a bit I don't feel like I think I've said already but I think you can slow the video down a bit and uh, if you want to watch the in more detail just slow it down so I'm just, just suggesting the different stones on the building I'm not going trying to paint every one yawn that would send me to sleep um, I just literally suggest them with a bit of texture and a bit of brushwork you know now, some people paint every, all of the all of the different bricks and they do it very well, but I would never have the patience for it. I just wouldn't be able to do it. So I tend not to do it. I just love keeping the brushwork as loose as possible. And you know when you're in the right place because you can just feel it. You, the, you know, the brush just skips over and you just feel like you could do anything and it's going to be okay. Um, doesn't always work out like that, but uh, yeah. So if you just like at the end, I do. Uh, I take the tape off from around the painting at the end, and you can see the uh, you know the painting where it's tidied up a bit. And we'll do a little chat briefly at the end, a comparison of uh, of the paintings of the one I did 35 years ago and the one I finished today. 
So I'm just putting in the tree again, just very, very loosely, just suggesting the branches and Some people might say a bit slapdash, but that's the way I like to do it. That's the good thing about painting. There's no right or wrong. You know, I can't say anybody's way of painting is wrong because if that's what they enjoy, then it's right to them and they enjoy the look, then that's absolutely fantastic. So tolerance is what's needed in painting. We, you know, just enjoy everybody's style really for what it is. It's, you know, a hobby in it. It's fun. Nice bit of decoration for your walls. So just put the last little bits in. Last final darks there. Okay then. <clears throat> there we have it. So this one took me about, I don't know how long it took me to paint this one today. About an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes, something like that in total aspect. Um, you know, I can see quite a lot of progression from this one that was 35 years ago um and, it, and this one is now um, my style is a lot looser um, obviously there's a lot more color involved and i'm i'm painting more things that i see i'm not just painting it how i think i see it like a bunch of flowers or a tree with leaves i'm trying to put my own sort of um spin on it i suppose my own style uh, to a certain degree and this one is just noticeable what we talked about last time the one I painted 35 years ago it's noticeable by its complete lack of shadows um, I was obviously very you know there was no shadows I didn't lay it any of it. I can't believe it really when I look at it I tentatively put shadows down the side of the chimneys but I put none across the roofs and uh, stuff like that um, yeah so I know which one I'd rather have on my wall. But um, there we go. If there's any questions you've got about it, feel free to ask. Um, I hope you enjoyed the demonstration. I know it was a, a sped up version, but um, time was um, against me today. I couldn't sit there narrating all the way through the video, so I've been here hours. So, And I've got, got things I have to do later. So I just I wanted to get out for you, so it was not too long after putting the first uh, video out. So I hope you enjoyed it. So yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this video and uh, visit Pure Watercolour, my website. Um, lots of lovely things going on there. Um, so yeah, thanks very much for watching and bye for now.